Hello there my friends and welcome back. In the last video we've been introduced to Django and what is the MVT architecture. And as Django is Python web framework, you will need Python installed on your system. And in this video series, I'm going to be using Microsoft Windows. So installing Python is pretty straightforward. You will need to go to python.org website. You will need to go to the download section and you can see download for Windows. We have Python 3.12.3. That's the latest Python version. So you will click on that. It's downloaded. You will install it very easily. It's pretty straightforward. And in order to verify that Python is successfully installed on your machine, open your terminal and type Python hyphen hyphen version. Just a verification step that Python is installed. And within Python, there is the Python package manager that it's already installed with Python. So pip helps you to install different packages and libraries that can help you building your applications. So don't worry if you've installed Python, that means that you already have pip. And to check out the version of pip, you can type pip dash dash version, hit enter. And that's the pip version that we have, pip 24.0 that comes with Python 3.10. You can also do pip help, pip hyphen hyphen help, so that's going to give you help flags if you are going to use pip to install third party libraries, as we said. Some of the most important pip commands is pip install. That's very important. We're going to install different packages using that command. Also, you can download packages via pip download. You can uninstall, you can do freeze. And that's going simply to output the installed packages that you already have installed on your machine. And you can see that there are a lot of commands that you can use indeed with pip. Now, Django, you can download the latest release, which is 5.0.4. Simply by going to djangoproject.com, you will click on download the latest release. And that's basically how to get the latest release official version. If you're using Linux or Mac OS, you can use this command. However, if you're using Windows, you can use this command py or python hyphen m. And the m flag in Python is used to run a module as a script. So in this command, python hyphen m, we tell Python basically to run this given module as the main program. Pip install Django, and then you define the Django's version that you want to install. This explicitly tells Python, I want to grab this specific version of Django and install it on my machine. All right then, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to copy this, doing control C to copy, and I'm inside my PowerShell terminal here. Then I will hit control V to paste that. I already have it installed. So most probably we're going to have the message that requirement already satisfied. All right. So to verify that Django is already installed on your computer, you can go ahead and do Django hyphen admin dash dash version. And here you can see that we have indeed the latest version 5.0.4. All right, guys, so I'm inside an empty folder here. And as we've installed already Python and Django on our local machine, this might not be the best practice. The best practice is you create a virtual environment where you can install your libraries only inside your project. All of the dependencies inside your project are going to be isolated from your global file system. And that's the best practice you want to follow every time you create a Django project. So I'm inside that empty folder. I'm going to right click show more options, open with Visual Studio Code. Now Visual Studio Code is the best option for beginners and even advanced users. It's lightweight, versatile, and you know, has a lot of extensions that you can use in your development. So as you can see, I'm inside the Django course directory, and I want to open the integrated terminal in VS Code. One way to do that is by going to terminal, new terminal. So you have here your integrated terminal open for you. However, the other way that I prefer personally is by hitting control tilde. It's going to open the integrated terminal for you immediately. The shortcuts are really handy, especially when you work in big projects. You don't want to waste time clicking different buttons and opening different menus. And eventually you're going to have the same result. All right, then. So I want to create a virtual environment inside that Django course project. So there are actually different ways. The way that I really prefer is through pip pnv. Now you can install pip pnv simply by typing pip install pip pnv. Of course, I have it. So the requirement already is satisfied. Now, once you have that installed, you can simply activate the virtual environment by typing pip pnv shell.
Fantastic! Now we have the virtual environment activated inside our Django course project. We can now install Django using the same keyword, pipnv. So the way to do that simply is by typing pipnv install Django. That's awesome. Now we can check out if Django has successfully been installed inside our virtual environment. And the way to do that is by typing pip freeze that's going to list all of the modules and frameworks installed virtually inside our project. And indeed we have Django version 5.0.4 and other packages as well needed with Django like SQL parse or typing extensions. Now we can create our first project by typing django-admin start project and I'm going to give the name of the project which is going to be my project simply. So once I will hit enter, notice on the left side there is a project initiated called my project that Django has created for me. All right, so let's take a look what we have. The second my project folder has different files, init.py, asgi, settings, urls and wizgi plus the manage.py which is in the root folder. Let's start by the first file, init.py. So for that, I'm going to just minimize this a little bit. This file is present in each Python package. It can be empty as you can see, but its presence indicates that the directory should be treated as a Python package. The next file, which is asgi.py, ASGI stands for Asynchronous Server Gateway Interface. So this is a standard interface between the asynchronous Python web servers, frameworks, and applications. It's like a bridge between Django and asynchronous features, like WebSockets and long-lived connections. Um, simply put, it what allows Django to handle real-time interactions, like for instance, chat applications or live updates. And this is done by connecting with asynchronous Python web servers and frameworks. So you can think of it as the technology that enables Django to stay responsive and handle multiple requests in the same time. Next, we have the settings.py. This file is very important. It contains configuration settings for your Django project. It includes database settings, uh, it has your secret key. You don't want to share that with anyone. The debug key is set to true. This is for development, the installed applications. So when you will install different applications, you need to add these applications inside that installed apps list. You have middleware. This is basically for the incoming HTTP requests and the outgoing responses. The templates, you have um, the databases here, which is SQL 3 by default, but you can change the engine if you want. You can change that to SQL Alchemy, to MongoDB if you prefer NoSQL database management systems. You can really play around here. So you can see that Django is really flexible. That's why a lot of web developers love working with Django. The static URL, this is very important for your static assets from images. Also, if you want to render CSS and embed JavaScript in your code. So all in all, settings.py is customizable. You can change different aspects of your project by modifying the settings.py. The next file is urls.py and this in Django serves as a URL dispatcher. Basically, it's going to map the URLs to view functions or classes. If you recall from the previous lesson when we discussed the MVT architecture, well, the request goes from the user to the views, but before that, it passes on URL dispatcher. And that's exactly the urls.py function. You can see here, for example, in the URL patterns list that we define the URL path for our project. We specify how incoming requests should be routed to different parts of your application. And later when we'll create our project, we'll have here different path depending on different routes that our users might want to visit. And the last file in my project is WSGI. WSGI is a standard interface between the web servers and Python web applications or frameworks. The key point here to keep in mind is that the wizgi.py file serves as the entry point for wizgi applications. And finally, manage.py. Manage.py script is very important. This is a command line utility that comes with every Django project. So for instance, when we're going to create our first application, we will need manage.py to help us do so. Also, manage.py provides various commands for performing common tasks such as creating database tables, running development servers, creating super users, as we're going to see when we'll create our project, 
Um, it helps also running tests. So it acts as a wrapper around Django's administrative tasks. So to show you that, let's actually create an application within our project. So the idea of Django is creating different applications within a project. And this is fantastic because once your project starts to grow bigger and bigger, you would want to divide your main project into smaller applications. So to create an application, simply you would need to change directory to my project. So let me minimize a little bit to list the components of that folder, you can see that we have indeed my project and manager.py. Now to create an application, simply you will need to type this command, Python manage.py, followed by a command called start app. And start app takes one argument or one input, which is the name of your application. For simplicity's sake, I'm going to call it my app. Hit enter. And now you can see immediately that we have my app folder that has been created inside my projects folder. Now let's go ahead and run our server. To do that, again, I'm going to utilize the manage.py command line tool. So we'll say Python manage.py, a command called run server. And you can see this message that has appeared telling us that starting development server at HTTP 127.001 on port 8000. 127.0.0.1, that's the local host. That's your local machine. And it's running on port 8000. So if simply you will click on that, let's go ahead to our web browser and check it out. And there we go. This is the welcome page of Django running on localhost port 8000. And it gives you a nice congratulations message telling you that the install worked successfully. So in the next video, we're going to dive deeper into creating our first application.